Recently I've been experimenting with taking photos of my orchids and if you look at many photos online of, of orchids you'll find that a lot of them are taken using a black background. So what I wanted to show you today is, is how I achieve that black, uh, black background and uh, maybe inspire you to take some orchid photos of your own. So one of the most common materials used for the black background is velvet and the reason is because velvet absorbs light um, but unfortunately I, I am cheap and I didn't want to buy velvet because it's kind of expensive so I found this um, it was called, it's like a moleskin type material but it also does a pretty good job of absorbing light it's got this kind of fuzzy texture to it so um, as you can see when it's tilted away from the light you can see one edge, you know, it's lit up by the light there, but when you start tilting it away, it really just turns black, you know? And if you have uh, something in front of it, like, for example, this orchid that's well lit, and you get your shot framed and everything like that, look what happens, that background really disappears, and you're just left with the, the flower. So I actually take my photos in natural sunlight if I can because it's just, it provides, I think it's the best color and everything and uh, you know I've tried to use a um, incandescent light at night and it just causes this orangeness, orangeness to, the, to the photo and I'm not skilled enough with the photo editing programs to figure out how to make that go away so natural sunlight is definitely the best. You can see I've got the window here at the side and then like I said earlier the background is tilted away from it so that the light does not bounce off the background. If it does it's going to light it up and it won't look good. Well, it'll, be, it'll be too light. Another thing you definitely need is a tripod. You want to keep that uh, camera as still as possible because um, these are kind of low light conditions. In order to get that black, black background, you want to, you don't want really bright light because you want everything to be kind of toned down a little bit. Um, and so you want to keep your camera very still. I tried taking some photos holding the camera and they just came out just that slightly bit blurry and you just want to avoid that if you really want a quality photo. Okay, it looks like we've got everything set up. We're going to zoom in a little bit. Make that ugly background disappear. There we go. Okay, and after some finagling and adjusting, I think this looks like a pretty good shot. So let's take a couple of photos. Okay, here's another one. What do you think? I like having, I like the whole plant. I like to see the whole plant. It just kind of makes, makes things a little bit more real. Alright, and don't think that there's not a lot of adjusting and thinking about what looks best. You kind of just have to move the camera around and decide, hey, what looks the best to you, you know? I think this looks okay. I can't decide whether to leave that leaf, th this one right here on the left, cut off you know cut off like this or to zoom in a little bit more it's really there's a lot of decisions to be made really alright let's try one like this and then let's try leaving it in maybe adjusting it a little bit what do you think? does that look good? another thing is if you are having trouble getting the light that you want you can always use um, a mirror or something that will reflect light to help um, brighten up the, the shadowy parts that you'd like to have a little bit brighter. Alright, well that's pretty much all this amateur can tell you. Uh, like I said, it's kind of an ongoing process. So if you're interested, get you some black cloth, get you some stuff set up and try taking some pictures on your own. You can take pictures with your phone and they can come out really nice, you know. Just make sure that you have it uh, kept steady. This is William Green with My Green Pets. See you next time.